Hard to know, I yeah. guess. Okay, here comes right. the live stream. It's just turning on right now. And we have just All a right. couple, couple minutes, so. Okay. Let's tell me when to begin. Yeah, well, I'll do my, my little intro a bit. And, um, oh, correct, yeah. Yeah, maybe a little quieter class, so you, we'll see how it goes. Mm -hmm. So just a couple minutes until we begin. Thank you to all, to everyone who's joining us in our Zoom meeting or in our YouTube live stream. And we'll get started right at 9.05. So just another minute to go and then we'll get started with our Falch Nature School director, Carolyn Guest. Um, we'll get, we, I think it's just a minute until 9.05 and we're gonna be doing our household science for preschool. All right, well, welcome everybody for this Friday morning class, Household Science for Preschool. Um, in a moment, I'll turn things over to our Balch Nature School Director, Carolyn Guest. My name is Drew Bush and I'm the Director of Programs at the Fairbanks Museum. And we welcome you, whether you're joining us in Zoom, on YouTube or on Kingdom Access Television or your local cable affiliate. We're excited to have you with us today. For those of you in Zoom, I just wanted to point out a few things. At the bottom of your screen, you'll see a Q&A button. And on there, you can ask us questions and I'll have Carolyn ask them, answer them, I should say, yeah, live in class today. Um, if we get a lot of questions, of course, I will also try to type some responses. So make sure you keep looking at that chat box in case your question gets answered in written form. Um, you can also in there ask questions anonymously in case you might be worried about your identity in class. Um, to the right of that button at the bottom of your Zoom screen, if you move your cursor, you'll see a chat button and a little welcoming chat inside that from me. We of course welcome you to chat with us or to answer Carolyn's questions as well there. If you're on YouTube or perhaps watching on your cable access, we encourage you to send us your questions as well, either before, during, or after class. You can send them to me at dbush, B-U-S-H, dbush at fairbanksmuseum.org. One quick note, of course, we are recording this class today for our archives and for rebroadcast later by cable access. So be aware of that if you choose to interact with us today. And thank you again all for joining us. I'm gonna turn things over now to Carolyn Guest. Good morning, welcome to my kitchen. We're coming back again for our next week to some kitchen science for preschoolers. Today's kitchen science is going to be a combination of preschool working with grownups. We're gonna be doing, we've, last week we colored some eggs and we did a lot of, um, vinegar egg type experiments. Well, this week I was wondering about what do I have in my refrigerator that I could use to do some, something to change the color or the texture of the food to make it different. And in doing that, I noticed that I still have boiled eggs among other things. So let's take a look at some of the things I found and that we're going to use today. Well, the eggs, this time of the year, a lot of cultures do a lot with eggs in their traditions, both with Easter, Passover, and other uh, spring rituals. Eggs are symbolic of rebirth and new life. And so I have some boiled eggs. And I also found beets. Beets, these are some beets that were cooked you could either cook your own or can them and use them in different foods. But what if we put those beets with those eggs and some spices? 
spices and vinegar. We come up with a recipe that's very typical in the Pennsylvania Dutch tradition of pickled beet, red beets. And then let's take this, and let's see what else I found. Hmm. I found I had lots of carrots and I had, oh, wrong one, I, onions and garlic. I've got, Oh, I have a head of cauliflower that I cooked and I need to use up. Wow, I wonder what I can do with that. Oh, how about if I added some canned gabonzo beans to that? We're going to find out what we can do with some of these ingredients today. I'm going to set them over on ones that I don't need on the other side of the sink. Uh, also, one of the things we can use with changing the flavor is vinegar and spices. And there are different kinds of vinegars. The one thing you could use wine vinegar, regular white or cider vinegar, but you don't want to be using the, the older aged vinegars like balsamic vinegar. That turns everything, doesn't work well with pickling. We're gonna do some pickling. And kiddos can help with measuring Great math connection there. And with um, measuring and doing some cutting. Uh, for cutting, I usually children use either a wooden knife and a cutting board or plastic knives or a butter knife. And that gives them a good solid knife and a cutting board and seated, gives them a good solid situation for working and enables them to be successful without accidentally harming themselves. If you do choose to use a sharper knife, make sure A, it's sharp, and B, that you're with them and helping them to learn to use a tool safely, how to keep their fingers tucked in when that they're cutting, how to hold something in a safe way, and teach them a little bit of first aid, because accidents do happen with, with knives. But the, the big thing is, choosing if you are going to be using peelers and knives that have sharp blades to do it with them. And four-year-olds, you can do that with them. Three-year-olds, you really want to be hand over hand and really helping with, depending on the three-year-olds. Some of them are much more calm and easygoing with the tools than others. We're going to start today with the pickled beets, the Pennsylvania Dutch beets. I'm going to put my, oh, the other ingredient we use is canning salt. A salt, an iodized salt will turn, uh, react with the vinegar and create a, a science project you really don't want. So you want to use either kosher or pickling salt with any of your um, projects that you do for pickling. And we're going to start with our eggs. We could have our children peel the eggs after they're cooked and get those ready. Pickled eggs will need a brine. A brine is a combination, equal amounts of vinegar and water. Some use sugar. For the pickle recipe, we are going to use some brown sugar that's already in there. I've got my brine heating and the, it's a beautiful, beautiful red. I'll have to show you that color. Let's see, I have a right here. I don't know if you can see this color at all, but it is just the most beautiful beet red. And I had that heating with brown sugar. I added some cloves and a little bit of cinnamon stick. Some people like to add pickling spice. And I'm going to add to that my chopped beets. And again, that's another job the children can do is chop up those beets for you. And I've got most everything chopped. I'm going to just, with a butter knife, just break up this last beet and set it in with the brine to heat up a little bit. Yeah, I've got my All that up, and while it's heating, I'm going to take a jar, 
I have a jar here for this. Here it is. Here's my jar. I've pre-washed the jar so it's nice and clean and ready to go. And I'll be layering in the jar a combination of the eggs. And the warmed beets. So I'm going to start with putting a few eggs in the bottom. For a quart jar, eight or nine eggs is usually enough. And I've heated that up. I'm going to move these out of the way so you can see better. I'm going to use my funnel. It's just a little neater. You don't really need to to put the beet, turn the beet juice in the jar with some recipes say to put all the eggs in and then um, and then add your beet mixture. I'm gonna layer it. I want some of those beets in there. You can also do some predicting about what's going to happen with the beets, with the with the uh, eggs. How is the color going to change? Will the egg be completely red when that you're done, or just the outside edge of it? It looks like I've got nine eggs there today. Now I'm going to finish completely covering my eggs. Let it let the liquid sink right down in there. Like I need a couple more scoops of liquid because you want to cover it right up to that shoulder of the jar. Good opportunity to talk about the different parts of the jar, the vocabulary of what we're doing. Set that aside. Wipe up a little. Look at that beautiful color that we get with adding the beets and the spices and the vinegar will help preserve those. So if you've got lots of boiled eggs after Easter that you want to find a good use for, here's one and your children can help you do that. I'll set this in the refrigerator and it will be ready to eat in a couple of days. Another favorite spring beet thing for me, and beets are one of those wonderful root vegetables that keep well into the winter and late spring. So they're available this time of the year in the old farm families when that they didn't have the refrigeration, when you couldn't just go to the store, you could go to your root cellar to pull out beets. And if nowadays, of course, we can get canned beets as well. But we're gonna get the ingredients for our second project. This project, again, is using some cider vinegar, beet, salt and pepper, a little brown sugar, and one of my favorite spring vegetables that I just stuck from my, stuck from my garden, this is a piece of unwashed horseradish root. I scrubbed it really good, I peeled it, and after scrubbing and peel, uh, scrubbing it, it looks more like this. And then when you peel it, you see that white flesh and you just peel it until that. It's a fun root vegetable to, to experiment with. It puts off a really potent gas, much more potent than onions. So make sure the windows are open and the fans going because you'll notice it. And then you chop it up into little pieces and grind it in your food processor or as my husband used to do, grind it in the hand grinder. You'll need a gas mask to do that one. And it comes out 
mix after we mix it with some vinegar and this white ground it could if i wanted it finer i would grind it even more and creamy mixture and i'm going to use that with some cooked beef and a little bit of brown sugar dissolved in some cider vinegar one of the things I would ask my children to do is again, chop up beets. And I like to use my mother's favorite chopping tool. It's just a little chopper and I'm gonna just chop up sort of like I'm gonna do a beet hash. They can be sliced, they can be whole. They don't need to be chopped, but I like it chopped. And then to those beets, I'm just going to pour in my brown sugar and vinegar using my little handy measuring tool and horseradish. Now, the recipe calls for three cups of beets and six ounces of horseradish. I play with how strong the horseradish is, how much do I have. Sometimes I make it really strong, sometimes I make it much more mild, but I'm going to put in, I have a container here that I'm going to just add. I'm not going to add all of my extra vinegar um, because I use the cider vinegar. Cider vinegar is a little bit fruitier, has a nice fruity flavor to it, unlike the more acidic white vinegar. And then all I have to do is just stir it up and it gets this beautiful pinky red color. I'll put it in a container in a jar or a covered container and refrigerator for a couple of days. And Sunday, I'm going to have what the Polish people call shvikwa with my sausages and so there's a fun way. Horseradish is a stronger, more pungent, aromatic veg, um, root vegetable. You know, if you either like it or you don't, but it's a fun one to experiment, like play with just because of how different it is from anything else that you find this time of the year in the growing in the garden. I'll set this aside. And on to our next one. And I need to tidy the workspace a little bit and get rid of a couple of things I don't need. Of course, there are other common aromatics this time of the year, are onions and garlic, which are great in any of the marinated pickled vegetables. Well, a favorite at Balch Nature School in the fall is pickled carrots, because we usually grow some carrots in our garden and we have dill growing there. So we usually pack a jar with some dill and carrots. Sometimes we'll add garlic. And then we make a simple brine. A brine is a mixture of vinegar and water. And you cook it with some salt or sugar. Remember I said that you want to use the canning salt or the kosher salt because otherwise it, it'll make your vegetables a funny color and texture. There's another science experiment too. And so I cooked up some basic brine. And one of the things that we've done with preschoolers at school is we'll have some basic brine, make one batch that doesn't have much sugar in it and one batch with more sugar in it. And we'll put out an assortment of herbs and vegetables and give each child a little jar and let them experiment. Some of the options for changing uh, up your vegetables for spices would be uh, things like fresh herbs like dill or rosemary or thyme. Those work really good in pickling. They hold up well. Or you can use them dried. Um, there's one of these that's labeled on. 
but dill seed from all that dill that we grew with the gar in the garden last year keeps well, and you can add that to your jar. Um, fennel seed's going to give more of a liquish flavor versus coriander seed, but you can just put out a whole assortment of different herbs to check out the smell and crush up and see what they smell like, and then choose what you would like and make a batch of pickles. Again, you start with a clean jar and put in your spices in the jar and then your carrots and whatever vegetable that you would like. And then top it off and end it with your brine. So I'm going to... One question, yeah. Carolyn, from somebody. Yeah, yeah. They're just wondering, do you, when you're pickling, do, are you also putting that in the fridge to pickle after you're done or do you do something else? I with am. It? Yes, we're doing a refrigerator pickle today. A refrigerator pickle is one that's not processed to stay for long term. It's good for a couple of months. Couple, you know, at the end of a couple of months, you start to see some change in the vegetables that you may or may not want. <laughs> so you, you know, a couple of months, but they're usually good after even 48 hours. But you know, we at school we usually set them in there for a week and then check them, and then keep checking them until they're gone. This last winter, our carrots, I think we did a full two months with them and we had several students who would, when we were, they were done snack and they were still hungry, would ask if we had any more pickled carrots. So that, that's, um, that's a very good question. Thank you for that. So they are refrigerator ones there. If you wanna keep them long-term, you do have to do a hot water processing or uh, pressure cooker processing, depending on the vegetable that you're using and follow uh, a good quality uh, source that's USDA uh, sponsored to know what's a good way of handling that. Um, so those, I, you know, some of, another thing you can use for spice are dried spice. And I have turmeric, and garlic and ginger work good. Mustard seeds give a really nice flavor in vegetables too. Turmeric and um, there's one more that I'm trying to think of, of uh, a paprika type thing will give a nice color to the brine as well as flavor. So those are some of the things you can do. And we're gonna upload a, the re a recipe that you can use and to make your own refrigerator pickles. Move on to one last project before we finish, and that's a marinated vegetable product where we take cooked, veg cooked and raw vegetables mixed together, add it to uh, an oil vinegar dressing and let it marinate. And again, this type of a, a vegetable uh, product is not gonna keep as long as the ones in the vinegar brine but it's a great salad, It'll last a week or so. And we're gonna to put together one today using cauliflower, gabonzo beans, carrots, onion, garlic, and uh, a vinegar oil uh, dressing. I'm going to move out of the way. One more set. Bring back our cauliflower, our gabonzo beans, Carrots that I've cut up really fine. The cauliflower is a little cooked until pork tent, not tender, but just a little bit dense. But I've left the carrots raw just so that we can um, have a different texture with them. And you can mix them up in a bowl, or I'm going to combine them with my onion and garlic in a jar, put the marinade in shake it a little bit, put it in the refrigerator, shake it a little bit more and, you know, and refrigerate it again and it'll be ready for Sunday dinner. I'm gonna start with my cauliflower. Again, I'd have my children cut it up for me, have them help me open up and drain a can of beans. 
Have them help me chop up some carrots. And then add, I'm looking for my magic ingredients that I put in a jar. I'd add some seasoning. I'm going to use our personal blend of um, pepper flakes and peppers we raised in the garden. That will give it a little heat. And then I'm going to add to that a few mustard seeds. Parsley flakes. I'm measuring really good here, aren't I? And that's one of the fun things is if you want an exact recipe, write down what you do with the pickling process. And then you can, if you really like what you made, you can come back to it. If you don't like what you made, you can change it next time. I'm going to do a few grinds of salt and pepper. And my oil vinegar dressing oil and vinegar mixture here. I use apple cider vinegar and oil for that. Any questions? As they would say in Poland, smush nego, which means eat. Yes. So one person just asking, what does that recipe taste like once it you know, has been pickled and how long does it take to pickle it to get it to the right flavor? The marinated vegetables, I'll try, it's the, rest, the book, that I got it from and adapted it from. The book that I got it from used other vegetables as well. It was a um, non-copyrighted USDA publication. I, it said, at, you know, check it in 48 hours. And then the flavor is um, gonna depend on what you put in for seasoning. This one will have sort of a little bit more pungency to it or heat because I added my husband's pepper flake combination um but it's a, it's a nice smooth it's like eating a, a cold vegetable it's a cold vegetable salad yeah and, and maybe that's a good question for each of the three recipes you showed us today yeah um how long do they typically take to pickle or to settle in the refrigerator okay. um we've eaten the carrots usually i give the marinated the pickled refrigerator pickles about a week before I go sampling. The marinated ones, you can see, like I said, two days. The shvikwa, the Polish beets, a couple of days. Three days is what it says in the recipe book. It depends on how my memory is and whether I have it made in time or not. And, and then I enjoy the leftovers because I usually like to make a nice big bowl of it. Um, it's good with cold cuts and meat as well as um, you know hot meat. I bet it would be good with some of the vegetarian dishes that we do as well. And then with the pickled beets, you know, 24 hours, you can start sampling. The, the color will intensify and the flavor will intensify over the next days. And again, it's something you keep for a few weeks. It's, it's a refrigerator pickle. The pickled eggs, I would give a shorter lifespan than the carrots and other vegetables but you know, enjoy, experiment. That's what we're all about in Household Science. Thank you very much for coming today and look forward to having you come back for, for, for more kitchen science lesson, yeah. labs. <laughs> yeah, and I just wanna thank everybody for tuning in today as well, whether they were on YouTube or cable access or in our Zoom meeting. It was great to have you here today. And as Carolyn mentioned, we have some recipes and instructions for you at home that you can find on our website at fairbanksmuseum.org. It'll actually be next to a recording of this class. So thank you again, everybody, for joining us. And we look forward to having you again soon for a class. Thank you.